Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis and I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And we established this YouTube channel in November of 2019. And I'm so pleased to report that we've hit, uh, as of this week, 100,000 subscribers. I've got another video on that. But as I thought about what our intent is with this video, and I looked at healthcare and what has changed fundamentally in my lifespan uh, in healthcare. I started in the healthcare industry as a medical student in 1980-81 in Cape Town, South Africa, and spent a long, long time doing my PhD, uh, doing my residencies, spent 19 years from when I entered medical school, school till when I got my first job. So you can say I'm a slow learner, I'm not very smart, or I spent a long time at a crucial time in a transformative era of healthcare. And as I looked at our channel, as I looked at some of our videos, it's kind of this channel is a throwback channel to an old way of looking at healthcare. And what has changed? So what was interesting for me is that in the early, late 1980s, in the early 1990s, 1990, I entered a bioscience laboratory, a uh, surgical bioscience laboratory in Toronto with a guy called Steve Strasberg, brilliant man. And I did my master's thesis on glucose, but really what we were looking at was basic science. And basic science looks at biologic processes and how biologic processes work in the human body. This thing causes this thing to happen, and then these things happen, and this regulates that. And it really looks at the interaction of a variety of different elements to human biology. And we understood and we developed an understanding of a disease and health physiology and pathophysiology by disruptions to that pathway, that pattern by which the human body worked. And we were trained and taught in a bioscience model to go back to look at where the systems in the human body break down and you could then predict what types of disease happen when that system is dysfunctional. And that was my basic science training. One of the people that had the most influence on me was a guy you may have heard of by the name of Professor Tim Noakes. I happened to have been in his very first physiology class. He was my physiology lecturer at medical school. He was a new lecturer. I was a brand new medical student. And that's when we first met. But he was brilliant in terms of teaching us disease pathway, pathophysiology, and understanding anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology, disease progression, so that we could understand where diseases came from. And if you understand what the cause of the disease was, what was the diagnosis, what was the cause, you could then, by treating the cause, affect an outcome. So here's something fundamental that changed intentionally in healthcare. And I understand why it changed, um, but when I was in the laboratory in Toronto in the early 1990s, I was there from 91 to 96, 97, uh, doing my PhD and doing my, redoing my general surgery. However, there was a conscious change by the university educational hierarchy in medical science to change our students from focusing in the laboratory on basic science, which was I did, what I did, toward epidemiology. And they really focused on new, new uh, residents like myself, people who wanted to be clinical physicians, to doing epidemiology as their science, if it can be quite, I, I, I'm going to put that in quotation marks, I don't want to go down that road, and moving away from basic science toward epidemiology. Now, what's epidemiology? Epidemiology, in large part, is the study of outcomes. So we look for associations of something that influences something else. So, for example, an epidemiologic study may be two people jump out of an airplane, one has a parachute, the other one doesn't, and we compare how many people die or survive. And the epidemiology outcome study is that parachutes are significantly, significantly reduce the risk of death when jumping out of an airplane. I know it's stupid, but that's an epidemiologic study. And here's the interesting thing, is that epidemiologic studies are always, at best, associations. They do not and they cannot, by definition, be absolute about cause. 
They cannot be absolute about cause. They can give a percentage, a statistical percentage of two things occurring and using that statistical difference, the absolute statistical difference, we can make comparisons and say this is most likely or this is unlikely. But they are, epidemiology is about associations, not about cause. And that is why we get all these bizarre bullshit headlines in the news media saying that if you eat red meat, you're going to get colon cancer. Well, that is not a causal relationship. It's an association. Then we have to use statistical analyses to decide how causal is it. But it's never absolute. So we use relative risk. We use risk ratios. We use absolute risk. But those are all comparative analyses because they're outcome metrics. And the outcome of this is associated with the outcome of this. And therein lies the problem, is that we have become outcome-focused and we don't understand anymore, or we don't look to physiology. So the commonest thing that I see in my practice, one of the commonest things, 82% of the new patients that come into my practice are on a thyroid medication. And I ask them why. And they say, I have hypothyroidism. My thyroid is low. Okay? So a doctor did a blood test did an observational blood test, and when the number was low, they put you on a thyroid medication to correct the number. But they never once went back and said, okay, this person's thyroid is low, the thyroid uh, hormone is low in their bloodstream, let's go back and look at why. Do they have Hashimoto's? Have they had previous radiation to their thyroid? Do they have a cancer? What is going on? Why is their thyroid low? And let's look at the cause. No. No, no, no. They'll take these young people, sometimes as young as 15 and 16, throw them on a medication to correct a number without ever knowing why, without never, ever knowing what the true cause is. What's the biochemical cause? What is the disease entity? Can we treat that to remission and stop this? Now you're destined to be on a blood pressure medication or a thyroid medication or a diabetes medication or a statin for the rest of your life. And while epidemiologic associations are useful, for physicians to go back and look at root cause, they have become a, an objective in and of themselves, and we treat associations. So there may or may not be an association between LDL and cardiovascular disease. But the, the statistics, the epidemiology has been manipulated manipulated by people with an ulterior motive to put you on a statin even though LDL is not in any way, shape, or form directly associated as a causal, as a cause of cardiovascular disease. There may or may not be an association, I'd even argue that. But even diabetes that has a very, very strong association with cardiovascular disease, one of the highest associations with cardiovascular disease, diabetes is not causal to cardiovascular disease. But if you look at the disease process, we can find causality. And so one of the biggest, in my mind, mistakes that the healthcare industry has made over the last 30 years from the 1990s, not that long ago, is to disvest in basic science and invest in epidemiologic studies. And then create a murkiness between an association and assign causality to something indeed that's an association. And a good friend of mine, she's actually a uh, dietitian, but has a PhD, a woman by the name of Zoe Harkham that lives in in Wales in England, I just saw a couple of weeks ago, had a wonderful, wonderful uh, lunch with her and her husband. But she does a wonderful thing called the Monday Newsletter, or the Monday Letter. I'd urge you to, to join it, use my name, it's free, it's on the internet, sign up for it. But she takes these papers, these epidemiologic ludicrous studies, and analyzes them from the perspective, from the epidemiologic perspective, from how did these people derive at the statements they make? Because these are bold statements, bold statements. This thing causes this thing. And when you look at the data that supports it, it's epidemiologic, it's associative at best, and they've left a whole bunch of things out or included a bunch of things they shouldn't to come to that conclusion. And and you know what we we do, what we say about statistics. If you torture any statistic long enough, it'll tell you exactly what you want to hear. 
Think about those old Russian prisons, the gulags, where they, they strapped you down to a chair and waterboarded you. Oh, we did that as well in this country. <laughs> but be that as it may, you torture statistics enough, you twist them, you distort them, they will tell you everything you desperately wanted to hear. So if you think that lettuce leaves cause you to turn into a rabbit, there's going to be a study that supports that. So if you see any rabbits out there, speak to them in English, and if they answer in Italian, you know they're humans. Now, I mean, that's how stupid epidemiology can be. And I know that's a ridiculous example, but that's what we're buying into and believing every single day. And the problem with that is we're treating our patients based on that epidemiology, and most often or very often it is totally and absolutely wrong. So one of the things that this channel does is we try to go back and look at the science behind it, the basic science, the steps by which things happen, the plausibility of that. So when somebody out there puts an epidemiologic study out that says a plant-based diet is associated with health, uh, with longevity, look at the Okinawa study, look at the Blue Zone stuff. And then you go back and look at, okay, how long have we been eating plants for? What plants are they eating? Where did they come from? And what is the true purpose and meaning of that statement? You'll find it's all absolute bullshit. Absolute bullshit. But they went to a whole bunch of places the way people lived for a long period of time. And they said, okay, what do these people eat? And let's say they found 20 places where people lived a long time. But they believed that plants, because it was a Seventh-day Adventist paper or, or study. So they believed that plants were going to give you longevity. So they found four or five places that are they called blue zones. And what they did is they took all the other ones and they said, oh, no, 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 for this reason you don't count, for this reason you don't count. And that's exactly how it ended up with, with demonizing fat and praising sugar and praising polyunsaturated fat. Ansel Keys did a study of 11 countries, excluded a whole bunch of them because they didn't meet his health, his cardiovascular health risk criteria. And he said, okay, in these places that eat plants, that eat polyunsaturated fats, they don't have cardiovascular disease. But he excluded all the ones that didn't meet his hypothesis. Well, science doesn't do that. And epidemiology, folks, is not science. Science is understanding process, understanding the steps to endpoints. It isn't comparing two things and manipulating the data so it gives you the answer you're looking for. That is not science, folks. And we have become a healthcare system that is epidemiologic and that is responsive to numbers. Here's a bad number, here's a pill for it. And if I don't have a pill for it, the number doesn't matter because I don't understand it. We have forgotten, we've lost the ability to go back to our basic science and understand how we got here. This channel, folks, I focus, focus, focus very heavily on the science behind the story. Here's an outcome, here's an association. Can we go back and support it from basic science pathways or is it BS? That's what this channel does. And the proper human diet, as my friend Ken Berry says, is based upon us eating animal products. Not plants, not vegetables. And the optimum diet is what we discuss based on the science. And I will argue with anybody that wants to discuss an epidemiologic paper when we look at the basic science. If it supports it, I'm okay with it. If it doesn't, believe the science, not the epidemiology. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want to know more, if you want to set up a consult, give me a shout. If you're insecure about your doctor's knowledge or insecure that they're treating you based on epidemiologic associative data rather than science, we can help you to figure this out. We can look at your blood work through a different lens, through a biologic and a science lens, not through an epidemiologic lens. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want to get hold of us, 561-517-0642. If you want to support what we do, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support it a little bit more, throw a cup of coffee, throw a dollar at us on our Patreon account, Carb Addiction Doc, or at our um, PayPal account that is registered down below. It is a charitable organization. It's a 501-3C. Uh, uh, it is all charitable. It doesn't come to me. It goes to the production of these videos. I hope I've made you think. And if you're an epidemiologist out there, go ahead and leave a comment. Throw comments at me. Argue with me. 
Let's go to it because let's sort this through. Let's air it out. Let's make this transparent. But the next time you read a headline that doesn't make sense or doesn't seem right, it's probably an epidemiologic study.